what up peeps it's your girl Dash come back to you for all takes uh, today I'll be doing a review to insecure this is episode two for season three titled familiar like now you all know where I left off on um, episode one that was a very good episode now the whole thing with this particular episode Honestly, I will say this is more like a filler. We don't get to see um, all the ladies. We just but basically everything's pinpointed between things happening with Issa and Daniel. And that was nothing wrong with it. I felt like we need a little bit more um, just like, you know, development between the two. See what's really going on between the two of them. Now, you already know um, with their situation, they're doing a living situation. And, of course, they had a little bit of a heated discussion where she put forth because... He's trying to figure out, you know, where her mind's at, you know, what's going to happen. You know, they are living together. She's living there, of course, rent free, whichever. And certain signals where he's kind of leaning in for a kiss. And she's just like, I want to, you know, keep it where it is right now. You know, we're, we're cool. We're friends. Let's just deal with that, whichever. She's trying to get back on her feet, get her own place. Hence, now we're into episode two where she's still applying for apartments and to no avail. And nothing's happening. She's not seen Daniel for a while. Come to find out. You know, when she finally does reach out, she texts him and he's finally responds saying he's good. He's actually with the girl he's been having such a very loud love making with. And her name in this actual episode is her name is Vanessa. And you do see a little scene with um, him over at her place, whichever. You can tell she makes little comments here about the girl staying there, what's going on, she's going to do this and all that. And he kind of gives her the idea of she won't be here much longer, whichever. So, of course, when Issa does reach out to him and he does reach out back, he's kind of letting her know, you know, I, you know, my girl's making some comments with her and all that. You know, you have like a, I might have to give you like another week or so, whatever. And she's kind of feeling like, okay, I need to do what I need to do. So, of course, she eventually reaches out to Kelly. We do get a, one little scene with Kelly, not the other girls, Molly and Tiffany. And she just kind of puts it down because, of course, she's an accountant. And she just lets her know, tough love, credit shot. You don't have enough money saved to go out here and get on a place. You need to kind of stay put for a minute. Now, she does find out that, of course, she's with staying with Daniel because at first she doesn't know only person I think honestly knew at the time was Molly and she's surprised because even though she's staying there nothing has happened she knows a little bit of course her history with Daniel in the past whatever but they're trying to be people time friends nothing going on across the board so there's nothing that causes an entanglement while she's living there whichever and um it is a good scene between the two because, like I said, I love me some Kelly. She has no filter sometimes to me. It's so funny because she makes a comment and she just says this to her when she finds out about her with Daniel. She says, don't look a gift horse in the bleep. And I'm just like, Kelly, oh, my God, where where does this come from to her grandma? I'm like, really? That's what she told you. That's what you got from that. I really find that hard to believe, but whatever. I just love her banter. Um, when she's, you know, in the midst of conversation, she always makes some blunt statement, and it literally will have your mouth drop. That one did it, because most of the episode was just kind of like, eh, because it was just about this, those two. Now, moving with Daniel, he eventually um, decides he wants to find this up-and-coming, you know, rapper guy named spider he wants to meet up with come to find he's going to be at the club so at first he's kind of like i don't know nothing good comes going to the club whatever and all that. so of course he says like no no you know she decides she wants to be kind of like a little wing person with him to kind of you know give him more support so like let, let's go whatever and all that let's see how it turns out whatever you know don't not not go because this could be his opportunity to you know reach out to the guy and see if they can collaborate so in the midst of that you know they get up to the front you know of the club not let in you know daniel doesn't have that you know credit whatever to get in there but she runs into someone she knows and they get him in there his ego is a little bruised you can tell and it gets a little bit more bruised when he first get in there because of course you know Issa does look cute she has a little you know showing a little skin got a little skirt whatever and she's kind of getting a guy who's kind of interested in her while she's trying to get some drinks but she's really just about being there for daniel and all getting a drink getting back to him but of course daniel kind of spots it then she's over there getting a drinks for them and she spots some girls talking to him but he's just in, just just kind of waiting it out whatever for her and the girls ask if he knew certain things just some little axed or ad lib talk whatever and they kind of went on about their business so that was short lived but you know they eventually get together and they see spider whatever they try to get into the back area which is kind of like a VIP area and then from there you know he kind of tries to you know work his way to see the guys interested and he's kind of first kind of nonchalant like he's not sure what and all that and then the other guy who Issa knew who helped him get in he kind of put you know his little stamp on some things in regards to spider you know maybe want to collaborate whichever and all that so 
is a chance it could happen. He has, you know, this opportunity as far as kind of presenting because some other things pop up inside of the club, a little shooting, whatever, and all, and they have to disperse. So it does show Daniel and Issa kind of hanging out at a restaurant, talking about what went down, her giving him some advice about, you know, what he's trying to do because he feels like this might be a good opportunity, it might work out, whichever. Now, he does work with somebody in the studio named Seven. You know, he, if you saw the first episode, Donna Richards was in that, and she brought her into her to do like a little bit of singing horribly we know that's not true she's a great singer but the whole scene with that was hilarious whatever because he using her basically the other guy to kind of get some of the people she knows is, is, as they say good good old-fashioned networking you know you, you you know you deal with one aspect of it to get closer to what you really want the bigger fish whichever so that's kind of it so he's basically trying to get this guy spider collaborate with music you know don't know how it's going to pan out with whatever music or type of style he wants to do with his buddy who he works with you know as a producer of music whatever for what they're trying to get together and make and create but i enjoyed um just getting more of a feel for Daniel because I know with the uh, other season, you know, we would see him here or there, whatever, and always talking about his music, what he's trying to do to jump off, whatever, and all that, produce and stuff, so he can get more well known and then have more people wanting to gravitate to him, so they can, you know, work on some new music with and all that, you know, and just show that he he's a formidable person in the music industry, slowly building that cred that he needs, whatever, so people come to him, you know, to make those beats, and um, that was nice because. We would always, like I said, see those scenes, whatever, but they weren't going into more detail. So now we're getting to see a little bit more of him and his element, which is nice. Now for Issa, throughout the episode, you did see the part with her dealing with her living arrangements, trying to find a way, whichever. Now, Daniel let it be known after she gave him that good sound advice or whatever, that he's like, you know, no, you're more than welcome to stay. Kind of like more of an olive branch. She doesn't have to be so hasty to leave, even though he told her she had a week. So he kind of took that back, like, you know, Vanessa who, you know, so that was a good part for that. Then also, you know, her feeling cramped because she's still on the couch. Then him making a comment about, oh, you can sleep in the bed, you know, with me. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. That was very interesting because I literally was just like, really? What? You know, I thought he would probably flip it. Like, you know, even though that's his home and she's there rent free, you, know, you go ahead and sleep in you know, the bed. I'll sleep on the couch. Oh, no, you can share the bed with me now. We're going to do that little thing in the middle where we make that line. So, you know, you stay on your side and I'll stay on mine. Okay. Yes, they all do that from time. But uh, yes, also, there was one good scene that I enjoyed where. Um, is happening with uh, Issa with her job, you know, her boss, Joanna, realizing um, their logo for the company we got, y'all, is just stereotypically kind of racist where you got this white hand. It's got three, you know, black, you know, kids and whatever. And they have to kind of change the dynamic and all that. That could be one of those things that, you know, kind of, you know, has people kind of hesitant to come and utilize their services, you know, to help within the community. And basically, you know, she is trying to defend herself, but she can't really do it. And people are listening to her, Frida, Issa, the other people, you know, within, you know, the office. It's just not working. So they know they need to, you know, kind of find a way to deal with that situation, whichever. And I'm kind of, you know, glad it's long over too, because when you look at it, it just looks so tacky. I'm like, come on, woman. Like, there's nothing you can say that's going to make this whole situation with you having that and you trying to justify that any better. So it's just like, you know, open yourself up take some advice, make the changes you need to make, whichever. So, but yes, like this episode, I feel it was a little bit of a filler. Like I said, it was okay for what it was. I saw the preview for episode three and that looks like it was going to be a little bit better. So, but I like the way, um, the opening and more dialogue between Issa and Daniel, I've really enjoyed that part. So, but that's basically what I have for this particular episode. I'm going to be definitely doing the third um, episode um, for um, Insecure. So be on the lookout for that, you guys. Hope you enjoy the review. Comment below. Let me know what you all thought of the, you know, the actual episode. It could be other things that you like more than others. And with that said, I will see you guys on the next review. You guys take care.